Praise the Lord. Welcome to Life in the Word. My name is Minister Emmanuel Renee Jr. As you come in, please like, share, and subscribe to Life in the Word. Amen. I pray that your day has been blessed so far. Amen. It's truly a privilege to be here once again on Life in the Word. Amen. Uh, we're going to get right into our topic today when we last left off, which is test yourself if you're in the faith or not, and is your salvation in Christ. Amen. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And we last left off in verse 7. And I'll be reading in the Amplified Version. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. It says, But I pray to God that you may do nothing wrong, not so that we and our teaching may appear to be approved, but that you may continue what is right, even though by comparison may seem to have failed. Amen. So Apostle Paul is speaking to the Church of Corinth about um, the cases of sin that was going on uh, in the church. Um, and Apostle Paul was more speaking uh, to the Church of Corinth about their condition, their spiritual condition, and about how they were living even in church. And you could be in church and live wrong. You know, church does not guarantee, nor does it say that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, but it's your life. And what we see here is the life of, um, of the believers in the church of Corinth that needed to be corrected. They needed to be disciplined. So Apostle Paul being, um, you know, being a mentor, being uh, a spiritual leader towards them. And not only that, because of his life was the church of Corinth also led to the Savior. Amen. But this same church was uh, turned around and asked Apostle Paul of proof of his apostleship, about his authority and who he was to correct them and discipline him. And sometimes we can play, um, be defensive, you know, about our walk and that we don't want anyone to ask us questions and to be corrected um, and to say, hey, sin is wrong and you need to get it right. We tend to um, want to be complacent in certain areas in our life when we're not fully given our life unto Jesus Christ, not knowing that these things uh, eventually could lead you right out of personal relationship with sin if you are habitually living like this. Amen. So Paul came to this church and spoke two to three times. And maybe this is actually this is the third time in coming to the church about the cases of sin. Amen. Uh, and he also says to them here in verse seven that he prays to God that you may do nothing wrong. That is his hope, right? That we do nothing wrong, right? But when we do, we pray that we are able to continue to do what is right. We, you know, and that is, and that should be our attitude. That should be our position that even if we do wrong, that we're able to continue to do what is right. We're able to continue to live for the Lord. Amen. The Bible said the race is not given unto the swift. So we understand that this is not a fast life. This is not a race, but this is a marathon. Amen. We have to live this life truly before the Lord every single day. Amen. We have to continue to shut out sin. We have to continue to shut out the world. We have to continue to check and examine ourselves as the Apostle Paul is saying. What is the question that we ask ourselves? Is Have you given yourself a test? Amen. You don't need a spiritual leader to, uh, to tell you that. You don't need someone that you know to come tell you that. You can ask yourself right now, what is the que you know, the questions needed to find out, are you living a life in Christ? And when you ask yourself the questions, you have to be honest. Amen. You have to say, hey, you know what? I have not been living the way I've been living. I have had a wrong attitude concerning the word of God. I've had the wrong attitude towards strong spiritual leadership. I've had a wrong attitude uh, concerning prayer and worship and spending time with the Lord. Other things has occupied my heart. Other things has come in. I've given my life to some um, way of sin, a life of sin, and it has changed me in a wrong way. Amen. So we have to pray to God that even when we do wrong, Lord, help me to do right. Help me to see myself. The Bible said there's a way that seems right onto a man, but it leads on to death. So there's a way that you can take, 
But it doesn't mean that is the correct way. Amen. It doesn't mean that's the way that you should do things and not the way that you should live. You know, and I believe that we should not find comfortability in finding a different way. Amen. Jesus has already uh, given the way, which is himself. He says that he is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. There is no other way unto the father except through him. So this is no other way but to live in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Our salvation is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul is saying he prays to God that you do nothing wrong. Not so that we and our teaching may appear to be approved, but that you may continue to do what is right, even though by comparison may seem to have failed. Amen. And by comparison, we may look at our life and we look at the life of someone else. And you say, man, I have failed. What's the point of turning my life around? What is the point of really living for the Lord? And I failed multiple times and I'm seeing how other uh, other people are living and they're living joy from the Lord. And I'm seeing that they're doing, um, you know, God is doing great things in their life. You know, what is the point of me um, to live this way? Because sometimes when you compare yourself, you can be discouraged because you can see the life of someone else, but you don't know. Um, the measure of faith that they have to live the way they are living continually in the Lord. And this is why we must not compare ourselves. We must not compare our life to someone's life because you don't know where they are spiritually. You don't know where they are in their maturity in Christ. Because, some, you know, everyone is, is at a different level of maturity. You know, some of us are still babes in Christ. Some of us are just growing up in Christ. And some of us are mature in Christ. We have been in Christ a long time. So this is why we can't compare ourselves. But we must be continually in the word of God. We must continually be in prayer. We must continue to hear strong spiritual leadership. Amen. And and, and, and grow. And, 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 and blossom into who God has called us to be. Our failure should not be our our quitting, but our failure is to say that, hey, there is an opportunity to continue and to continue in Christ. Because if I continue, God can do great things in my life. He can transform me by his power. Amen. So verse eight says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. And the gospel that the good news of salvation. We are glad when we are weak since God's power comes freely through us. But you, by comparison, are strong. We also pray for this, that you be made complete, fully restored. Amen. Growing and maturing in godly character and spirit, pleasing your heavenly father by the life that you live. So it's by the life that we are living, that we can glorify the Father. Not pretending, not living a counterfeit life, not choosing to live one way on Sundays or one way on Mondays, but to live a life committed totally unto the Lord every single day when you get up. And it's gonna take some hard questioning about your life. You know, some of us may have gone back into the world and looking to re rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. And guess what? That takes a hard, hard look into the mirror to say, I've fallen away. I have failed, but I must continue in Jesus Christ. You can't lose hope and lose your faith when there are failures. But our goal should always to press on to the mark of the high calling which is in Jesus Christ. Our goal is always to continue and, and, and continue with this race. And understand that if you continue, God's power can move in your weakness. God's power can move, come on, in your failures. Amen. So our maturity and restoration and us growing in godly character and by his in his spirit is coming by not quitting, but being committed, is staying in relationship with Jesus Christ, 
is to test yourself, examine yourself, inspect yourself, and know what is the adjustment I must make so that I can see transformation. Paul says, for this reason, in verse 10, I'm writing these things while absent from you, so that when I come, I will not need to deal severely with you in my use of the authority which the Lord has given me to be used for building you up and not for tearing you down. Amen. So finally, believers, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. And the God of love and peace, the source of loving kindness, will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All of God's people greet you. Amen. So Paul is ending his message uh, to the believers said, finally rejoice, be complete, be what you should be. Hallelujah. Be what you should be. Don't be what others want you to be, but be who you should be. Amen. Be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, enjoy the spiritual well-being, my God, experienced by believers who walk closely with God. So that only comes when you walk closely with God, not walking far from him, not only choosing certain days to walk with him, but walking closely, meaning that I can't be without him. I can't walk without him. I have to, come on, put my hand into his hand. It is something when your hand is in hand with God and you're walking with him and you're talking with him. Amen. The same way um, God was meeting Adam in the cool of the day because he was walking closely with God. It's the same way we have to walk closely with the Lord. We have to walk closer to him than we've ever been. And what you're walking close to shows you who you are. It shows you what you are becoming by who you're walking with. If you're walking with someone in the world, you're walking with someone that's choosing sin and they're living a life of sin. Eventually, that life will eventually become your life. So when you walk with God, then God, guess what? Holiness is not something you find an issue with. Holiness is something that you want to become and want to be because you know that God is holy. You know that he is, come on, that his requirement is for you to be just like him, to walk in his likeness, to come on, to be his, come on, be the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this word is coming to correct, is coming to encourage, is coming to ask yourself questions. It's coming to for you to um, be real, to be honest about yourself. Amen. And to find out where in your life there needs to be improvement. Amen. Praise the Lord. What is your thoughts towards Jesus Christ today? Where do you feel your salvation is? And if you don't feel your salvation is where it needs to be, we need to make the right adjustments. Amen. So I pray the word bless you and encourage you today. Amen. I want to say a quick prayer for those that have want to give their life unto Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, you and he has been raised from the dead, then you shall be saved. For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So just say a prayer with me if, uh, if you'd like to give your, your life unto Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I've lived my life not the way that you call me to live it, but I'm choosing your life today. Lord, I repent for all the sins that I've committed. I repent for all the things that I've done that you did not agree with, Father God. So Lord, I give my life to you today. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus was raised on the third day amen, and resurrected, amen. I give my life to you today so that you can transform it and that I can be made new and have become the image of you in this new life, amen. Today, as you're giving your life to the Lord, you've confessed the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart, you are saved and pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you, amen, today. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up, amen, to the overflow, to the fullness, and that you can see the transformation of God in your life, amen. So 
I pray the word bless you and encourage you. It did great things for you today. Amen. And it was a pleasure to be on Life in the Word. Amen. Have a great rest of your day. My name again is Minister Manny Renee Jr. Please remember, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Thank you.